you know, artificial intelligence didn't work very well in the old days. We didn't have enough storage and enough processing power to do anything interesting. Um, and so we tended to design systems that were rule-based because we had enough memory to write down a series of rules. So if you get this input, then you do that. You know, if you think about this, you do that. But we, we, didn't, we didn't have enough data to really do an analysis. Is that, does that make sense? Is that really how it should be processed? Now with you know, these enormous amounts of storage, we can use advanced machine learning techniques to really understand the underlying data in a way we couldn't do before. So a great example of this is machine translation. The old machine translation systems were all rule-based, and they were awful. I mean, they were just, I mean, they, it was a parlor game, right? You put something in and you see how funny it is coming out the other end. Or even better, you put in, you put in a sentence, you translate it to Italian, and you translate back to English, and everybody just laughs hysterically, right? Now, you know, the, the Bing Translate uh, uh, system that comes out of my organization, Microsoft Research, uh, or the, the Google translation software that's out there, um, we do a really good job. I mean, it's not perfect. There's, it's still way, way worse than a, a really good human translator could do. But it's good enough that people actually can solve problems with it. You can read articles in other languages. You can read, you know, for example, Microsoft automatically translates all of its knowledge base into other languages for people to use because all of our knowledge base articles which are articles to help our customers, are written in English. And yet, if a Japanese uh, uh, customer wants to use the knowledge article, he can now because it will be automatically translated into Japanese. And our studies show that that, that automatic translation of those knowledge base articles produces just as good a result for that consumer as the English article does for the, for the English consumer. That they, they solve their problem as just as quickly using that knowledge, um, and they're just as satisfied as the English consumer of the English data. So, so we're, we're building machine translation systems now that are useful, right, that really solve problems, that do things for people, and that's because we have enormous amounts of data, and we can do machine learning against that. We could not have done that 10 years ago.